Let's see if I can get a gallon to go in there good. Five gallon pail, I mean. What's up everybody, Steve here. Hey, I went ahead and ordered a bunch of t-shirts for you guys. Right now we're taking pre-orders between now and April 21st. The printing date on all the shirts is April 24th. If you guys order right now on fsctrucking.com, between now and April 21st, all shirts ordered will be printed on April 23rd. So what I did is I went ahead and put the order in. I asked, hey, can I adjust the order? They said, yeah, you could adjust the order right at, up till the time of we actually start printing them. So I'm like, excellent. So I put the standard order in. Now, last time I released these Orwell shirts, they were gone in literally a month, not even. The channel grew up a lot since then. That was about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. So with that, pre-orders right now. If you order between right now and April 21 at fsctrucking.com, all shirts ordered will be printed made. We have from smalls all the way up to 4X. Sorry to 5X because they just don't have them in this particular shirt. That's just how it rolls. Sorry, we'll, we do have other shop shirts that are be coming out and those will be in the big boy sizes as well. So right now, go ahead and check out fsctrucking.com. We got the merch shop. We got a couple of OG shop shirts available, but Orwell shirts we're focusing on right now. Pre-orders between now and April 21. All shirts will be printed that are ordered between now and April 21. They will be printed on April 23rd and shipped out immediately right to you. With that, fsctrucking.com. Check it out. What's up, everybody? FSC Trucking. We're going to get ahead and start finishing this job here. I already cleaned everything up that way. You don't have to. We're going to finish up getting this after cooler installed and start just getting basically the rest of Orwell done and ready to go. Because in reality, we loaded on Friday, today's Monday, we got to leave out Tuesday, and here we are Monday with a truck that ain't running, so we got to get cracking on this. There's always a deadline of some kind, right? Either way, we got to get started. After cooler goes right up in this cavity right here, went and got a new one. Actually, we got two new ones. That was a calamity of crap to do. We'll get into that here shortly. Now, I might have new viewers with this, so with that, this is Orwell. Orwell is my 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over. And this whole job started with a coolant line leak over which it's the coolant line that feeds the after cooler. It's a water charge air after cooler. In other words, water flows forward to back and the air flows in the downflow into the head. That's how the charge air gets cooled on these, not an air to air. Now, a lot of people recommend that I go ahead and change this over. Now this particular engine is a 7FB variant of a 3406B Caterpillar engine. It came like this factory, and I tend to believe as long as parts are available, use what ran. Caterpillar spent a lot of money in R&D on this stuff, and maybe there were improvements on it over the years. These water leaks could have been the improvement in why it went to air to air rather than air to water. Who knows, I don't know, but however, my theory is simple. It'll take me a lot longer to retrofit a kit. I don't have an, a manifold for this unless I steal one off of the A model that's in front of the 352 over that way in the shop. And I'd have to mock up or have built, custom built, an air-to-air -air system for this truck. And to be honest, that's a big job I really don't want to get into if I can just simply ink, if I can just simply remove and replace the after cooler that was broke. However, with that being said, one, one concern I have is the possibility of a bad after cooler and me not knowing it with the APU running, could I hydro lock a cylinder and not know it because I have an after cooler leaking? I suppose it's possible, but it hasn't happened. Maybe I got lucky, maybe not. It's one of those things where I have to look into, is there an inspection procedure on this besides losing water? Um, the only reason I even noticed we had a problem was a water leak initially. That's, it was just dripping on the ground because the engine was cold. Now this after cooler that came out could very well be the original after cooler. I honestly don't know. 
It could also be an aftermarket aftercooler, but by the looks of things, it appears to be original Caterpillar. So we're going to put the original Caterpillar one in, the new original Caterpillar one in, and we're going to box up and maintain the other one in case there's a failure or a build in the future. I already paid for it. I may as well keep it. Unless they want to give me back my money and pay the shipping, that's fine. We'll deal with that in the future. Either way, let's get the job started. Now, I already went ahead and cleaned up all the gaskets, mating surfaces, and I even ran all the bolts that go into here through a, a tap. That way, uh, I basically just put took a tap, ran them through, you know, put a little oil on, ran them in, ran them out with literally my battery drill, just to clean the threads on the original bolts. So I don't got to worry about cracking the aluminum. By the way, that aluminum piece right there is like 3500 bucks. The cap is like 700 and the proper core, well, that's about $4,400, which I already spent. All right, let's get ahead and get this game started. All right, now I went ahead and cleaned this off. I want to roll it over. I'm going to start by putting the O-rings in it. There we are. I'm trying to get this to show up good in the light. There's an outer O-ring that goes in here and an inner O-ring that goes in there. I'll show you how this works here in a second. Now the way this works is the aftercooler goes down into the cavity and then this goes inside. This seals the outer section of it. This keeps the compressed air from the outside from escaping out through, there's a gasket here and there's an O-ring here that keeps the compression in that cavity. Then this piece goes inside through both. Against here, in that notch right there is the O-ring. So that goes in, the aftercooler goes in, then this goes in, sealing the compression part, and then this goes in, sealing from the water. There's an elbow that goes here, which is again sealed by a gasket for the water flow. I put a little dab of grease on the o-ring to slide it in a little easier plus get that other piece to go in so we'll get this sucker there we go just had to be a little persistent and then this one perfect I don't know if I did this the last time or not, but when I put the head on the engine, we've been watching a lot of different videos. And uh, if you watch Gentry or SH2, they always talk about painting the head gaskets. Um, first of all, it's like a copper seal, and then it's literally just, I think, and it's just gold paint. Not really sure the value of that. They're saying it helps them, but I've never heard that before, to be honest. Either way, um, I don't know if I put these on dry or if I put gasket shellac. I don't know. But we're going to try this product. This I used, the reason I mentioned the heads, is this I used because Caterpillar Techs had told me it's best to use this on, on uh, the head gasket, on the bottom part anyway. It helps prevent the oil leaks. So we're going to go ahead and put this on here. dribbles excellent there we go
this new gasket set up. Excellent. By the way, you see the dabs of gasket shellac sealant. I already did the uh, other side of this. the gasket material on the bottom of the top of the cover put the sealant on the bottom of the after coolers top like you see now I place it on the cavity bolts in and get the alignment good. Now the book does say putting some Never sees on the bolts too before I get too carried away here. The book does say to secure the after cooler, the core rather, into the the core. The book does say to secure this down prior to putting the adapter caps on the ends. Now it says to torque them down to 25 newton meters. I know I'm a little go past torque. Gasket's a little soft. Yeah, it's brand new. Excellent. Now first things first, you take your first piece that goes in, put your gasket, remember this keeps the compression, the o-ring keeps the water and the compression out, but the gasket keeps the compression inside the box itself. It just goes on like so.
Next, the adapter to get the water from the after cooler. That goes in, seals, goes on the inside of the after cooler, seals on the outside of this adapter. No gasket is needed, it's just an empty cavity. And that's set in. I probably should have on the air side, but it wasn't a problem the last time. But we'll put a little bit of shellac on the gasket part for the water it wasn't leaking last time it's probably not required perfect I did put the gasket in here by the way Leave that one loose for a minute. I'll try to pry this apart in here. It's actually a coupling between two get two O-rings. Yeah, it obviously expanded outward. Oops, I leave those loose till we tighten them. Alrighty, boys and girls, so now here's the tube that feeds that after cooler line. We're going to change out these O-rings, just like we did on the after cooler. Thin coat of grease on them. Alrighty, once again we got our gasket, our compression, holds the compression in the box, and a compression from going around the tube, coming out of the after cooler. Put that in, like so. Next goes in our water adapter that goes inside the after cooler itself. No gasket between the adapters, there's no need, it's just an open cavity. Next around this gasket, this is for the water. Water will flow from that tube and into that hole right there. All right, so next we have to put this on. You put the, I already put the shellac on it, as you can see. We'll slide the gasket in from the top. Hold the gasket and we'll put our new bolts. Bigger, longer, better bolts. By the way, I looked in the book. There is no torque spec on these bolts either.
Excellent. All righty, so now we're gonna go ahead and roll the turbo snail over and put the intake tube and caps together. All righty, and I already cleaned all this mess up. So this works, this gasket goes here. Bolt goes through the entirety of the housing. We'll put two in just to keep the alignment. Make sure the gasket doesn't slide down. There we go. Now the gasket. Make sure the gasket didn't drop, it did not. Excellent. I cleaned the threads on these with the tap. I'll replace the nuts. Over the years, these got a little cranky. Alrighty, boys and girls, all well, the hustles worked it. Well, long story short, I've been doing a lot behind the scenes, didn't put the camera on for absolutely everything. Because, you know, after I got done with the after cooler, it was just a matter of just a little nickel dime stuff, and I want to bore you to tears, so I'll show you what I got done. So, yeah, the engine is not the prettiest thing on planet Earth. It's a road truck, but I went and ahead, put new fuel filters on it, put a new uh, oil filter on it. Went ahead, basically serviced it, greased everything, as you can see. Um, you know, like axle bushings and crap. I mean, look, greased right there. Yeah, that crap happens. Got the intake back on. The air intake goes up from top of the radiator into the air filter. And I also fixed the exhaust pipes that were a little bit busted, too. Remember, in the beginning of the video, probably in a different video, this was cracked, so I went ahead and replaced this. I had one that didn't have a bung in it for the uh, EGT, which doesn't work on Orwell anyway, so put that in there for now. Eventually, I'm going to put a new flex and a new piece with, a, with the right bung on it, but for right now, that'll get you down the road. Like I said, put the intake tubes back on. Everything's good to go. Filled up with oil. Went and greased everything. Adjusted the brakes, you know, the whole nine yards. All that's left I got to do now, basically is put the cab back down and uh, fill it up with coolant and uh, hope for the best, but I think we'll be fine.
righty, got Orville all new coolant from Caterpillar. See if I can get a gallon to go in there good. Five gallon pail, I mean. All right, the last gallon, courtesy of a old gallon I had laying around. Last gallon of the first five gallon pail. Got leaking. It's leaking out that freaking elbow again. Alrighty, boys and girls, the risk of looking stupid. I had to take the elbow off. And to be honest, the inside here doesn't look bad. It's wet. And well, obviously it was leaking good, but I don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. I don't know why. I just put this seal on. And somehow, I tore a big-ass chunk of it out. How did I do that? I'd love to know. So... I have extras. Taking these off, put new ones on. Oh yeah. There are quite a few of these in extra. Perfectly honest. I do have a lot of them. Well, not a lot, but enough to certainly recover from this, so. That's a whoops a daisy. I don't know how I did it, but I did. Working tired, I suppose. Just not tired. Just sore, aggravated. Call it what you want. I don't know how I did that. That's I ain't gonna lie, that's got me bothered, man. I don't make screw ups like that, but typically. I'm not infallible. Try to get the antifreeze off this thing because it makes it slippery. So what I'm going to do, it basically sits in there like so. Alright, so the tube sits in there like that and the elbow sits in here like so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on sitting here there now it's on so now the idea is that sits there like this and I can adjust this as I need without taking it out of the elbow. But that's watertight. Basically like that. I 
Tanya. Tank's about half full. Get the air out of it. It should just take the rest.
I should know it. <laughs> <laughs>